relates to the next explicit order. They're giving us evolution on the explicit orders. And what we're really interested in is what's going on in the implicate order. And so we have to somehow um, deduce from our knowledge of the explicate order what's going on in the implicate. And that's the hard, that's the really hard task of trying to take a process view or an implicate order view, is that you have no access to the implicate order only through sequences of explicate orders. And it's, I think that's, that's going to be well, I think probably that's an impossible task in the final analysis, that you can't actually do that uniquely from the, the data that you have at the manifest level. So just as a, as a first approach to this, the idea that, that we were exploring um, was to say, well, let's just look as a starting point, let's look at what we know in terms of quantum theory um, as a representation of process and see where we get, see how much we can get out of it. But this is where I say it's very much a toy model, even if I was doing full algebraic quantum theory here, because quantum theory is just a description of evolution of explicate orders. And it's only a fraction of what's going on in the implicate order. So even if, I, if, even if I did something very heavily mathematical here, it wouldn't be giving me the full implicate order. Um, doesn't the very notion of process uh, assume at least uh, something like, like a time coordinate? Because process is something going on before and after. Yeah, so you have an ordering. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's got to be an order yeah. in it. So you have to have some parameter that's giving you evolution in the implicate order. But, but time, um, time is something where you put all these different yeah. orders together into one uniform yeah. order. So right. you, can, you can have orders going backwards relative to another set of orders. Yes. So we, in have, we don't have one order, lots of orders. Yeah, not, yes, yeah. And there are yeah. different manifest, I mean, there are different explicit orders. In the implicate order approach, you can have different explicate orders depending on how you're interacting with the system, or how, well, which, which parts of the system you're separating off formally. It's so, a partial order, then. It's a, yes, a kind of partial, yes, a partial order, but not in the strict mathematical sense of partial order. No. And I think that would be claiming to know more than we do yeah. <laughs> it's about representations of the implicate order. This approach to quantum gravity from sorting. Yeah, but he uses specifically, or oh, what the hell does he call it? Causal sex. Causal sex. Yeah. Causal sex. Well, there's several different approaches. Yeah, but it's causal sex. Yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, I guess so. But it's important to... The, the main thing that, that we can be sure of is that the evolution parameter in the implicate order or in the process is not necessarily time that we see in explicate orders. Time is something at the manifest level which is to do with the ordering of things in the explicate order and that's only an aspect of the process so yeah. the, the two do not have to be the same um, you, you mentioned this the problem in space right yeah and of course there are, there are corresponding problem in time as well i mean yes irreversibility duration of time things that people have been working for that for hours a year and not so that yes yeah, so there's so the, there is i mean and i there's a, a very big issue of time in quantum gravity, which, um, which has received a lot of attention from various people. Precisely in particular. Precisely in particular. The ten yeah. meanings of time. I don't know whether I mean, that's yes, of the problem. Well, well, this, this, is, this is mainly is a problem in the Hamiltonian approach. It's yeah. So three percent right. split, and then um, you see that um, the Hamiltonian constraints, which generates the movement of the free uh, surface. Yeah, in the direction of time, of gravity and time, um, vanishes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. the, the equation h equals zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 problem. Yeah. 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 time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, our approach, if I can speak this for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Our approach mm -hmm. is that... Uh, oh, I should have said I'm happy with people. Uh, is that um, this, this always causes a difficulty when we're talking about process, because there's always a beginning and an end, you know, so, 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 which seems to be before and after. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a universal before and after. And therefore we want to try and keep, I mean what we do, I mean, I don't know about Nick, maybe Nick's thought about it much more than I have, but I always find myself being trapped in time. In other words, it's very difficult to think in terms of this loose different types of order in, in, in time. Yeah. So time is something very special. And it's the most difficult thing, but one can begin to mess around with it a little bit and, and find different hierarchies of time, so that there's not one universal becoming. 
So it's, 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 it's not in GR anyway. It's in GR, yeah. you look at the solution, it's, it's a metric which describes the whole universe. And then uh, the, the perception of things that are going on only comes in with when you make a 3 plus 1 split. Yeah, yeah it's sure. It's a reduce of service. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would like to see, I think we will talk about this, what these processes are, what, what, what goes on here, what, what, um, well, what I said that's, that's the problem. <laughs> well, if you go to a discrete non algebra, yeah. that might motivate. Uh, actually, you should for the notion of time, uh, type of time. Not, we don't, what, the idea is to try not to be trapped with conventional ways of thinking about time, if that's um, possible. Just to explore different ways of thinking about time as an order, whether there is a universal time or not. I mean, you've also got the the the. Uh, oh God, I'm another senior moment. What's that? that uh, before and after. There's, there's a sequence of times. So what was his name? Oh, the A series. Yeah, the McTaggart. A series. Yeah. McTaggart. Yeah, the McTaggart. And you've got a, a a lot of philosophical problems in there, and we just want to, I think, just keep free of that for the moment. We're going to have to face it in the end. But let's, yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's try and keep it as general as possible. I have a question about time. Oh. Uh, well, this is probably a very amen question. But we talked lots and lots of time, and nobody talked about clock. Yes. But if you don't have a clock, how can you talk time? Because that gives you the, the smallest interval of time you can measure. How can you base your philosophy of the world on a mechanical instrument? Well, why is it mechanical? How do you know it's priority is mechanical? So what? You, so you've got to have atoms? Well, or what? Probably. All Where are you getting your notion of time from? Your IEEs will probably be clocks. Well, if you if you uh, you define a clock, you find in Wiles' book how he defined his clock. But in biology. Yeah. Isn't there a whole series of different clocks which which yeah. are biological yeah. systems? No, well, I was I wasn't going to do clocks. I was going to do a bit about space. Embryos define their own space. They also define their own time. They don't use external time. They actually define their own time by interactions. They define their own space by interactions. So. Just biological systems. That's by developing embryos. Yeah. Do that. Okay. And they need to do that yeah. because they they. They can't use external references because they need to be adaptive. So, but I don't want to say that that's <laughs> they're a model for, for generating space time in physics. <laughs> but uh, that would be great if I could give a talk and say, here's, here's the solution. It's all developing embryos and showing us how to do it. Can I ask one last question? Yeah, sure. So for your process, do you have anything like a notion of composition? So you know, I'm still trying to get back to what you mean by this week and uh, a process is, for example, that it's something like you do one process and then there is another process. What? I mean, one, one idea would be think of it as a group point to begin with. Category. Yeah. Of yeah, that's what I mean. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes. There's the yeah, weaker even than a category. Even weaker than a group point. point. Um, oh, so it's strong. So it's strong, okay. It's different anyway. It's different, yeah. yes. I'm not convinced there's, that anybody's really decided what the best mathematical representation of process is no. because of all these problems. I mean, I'm going to show one, which, well, I'm, I'm not really going to show it really with Basil talked about it this morning, but the using algebra and inner or small piece of algebra to reference it. This is just a side amount, but it's looking, my computer scientists have been look, looking at process for the last 30 years, and at some point there came a paper out the 700 and want process algebra. So, and this is just about process, trying to model the idea of process in a very well understood device like computer. So just the idea of what is the process and how does time and space come into that like a gigantic area of research for such well, a simple sure, sure. situation. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I just need to put, in, in, put one quick thing to what Bob just said, because the, the, the problem with any such approach is that if process is really primordial in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in, in some really profound, on the logical sense, then they're clearly the cat